I'm talking to the new guy and and trying to get him into the show, and, and you're sitting here trying to usurp my control, motherfucker. You are fired. You guys ready? That's how cool it is. I don't. I don't. Get, I. I don't <laughs> I care never about use your, your. I gotta background. have my boys on the Winter Soldier. So sad and pathetic. I have a, I have a real background. Yeah. It's real things. things and I. I, I have a re- real green screen to where you know, like everything, like. I want behind me will actually be, be behind me instead of my my camera trying to guess where my fa- face is at. Like, <clears throat> I wish you, you lived close. You guys see you got a, you've Overwatch. got a microphone thing, oh. just like what's the Overwatch? What's I don't. Nobody's ever asked me about this. I can't believe it. I need to click on your picture. <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, NBA All Star Luka Doncic. Oh, you have a standee oh, yeah. like me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like literally from a, a Mavs game that I got there oh, nice. in, at in a Dallas game. And I have it set up behind me, kind of overwatching up the Zelda copy down here. Right. Got, ah, yeah. the best Zelda. <laughs> that <laughs> arena. Ready for this? Yes. Ready for this, nerds? Yes. This thing's this thing's cherry. Okay, we got this. We got nice. The, we got the manual, and you know what's coming. It's the gold. The cartridge. golden cartridge. Oh, that was only A's the. Uh, Standard on the original game. I would game. have to double like, check. Everybody Are you used sure? to think it was really fa- on the original game. Gold, not Ocarina. I'm talking the original. Oh Zelda, yeah, 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 yeah. Ocarina was a limited that, that edition. Was, yeah, and uh, I I can't remember people when I was real little because the Nintendo was damn though. Coots rarer got taste to have Pe- that people Zelda like oh my god <laughs> like bragging about having a a golden game and yeah. it turned out that was just. N- normal back then, but yeah, I've the uh, 64 standard the was Pokemon was, Gold uh, was gold, <laughs> gray. They, so, anyways, with with uh, that fucking guy showing off his his, I'm not his technically done, but we can start the show if you want. Geek di- dick. So, anyways, good morning, everyone, and welcome to LR Mornings today with Kyle and Top Guy Nick. I don't know who's top and on bottom yours. guy okay. Coots, I'm and Coots. that's. That's that's who's here, and so it's kind of like a combination of of Mo- Marvel Multiverse Monday days and LR mornings, but it's not really because I've had these two on LR mornings together before, so it's really just LR that's fucking true. mornings. Coots even did your show yeah. before he did Marvel Multiverse Mondays. Exactly, that's, that's true. But that was a practice kinda, round, so his like... real first appearance was on Marvel <laughs> Multiverse Mondays, and we've missed this in the last. Almost two like weeks. this is this to... is kind of my podcast family because I don't really think that I've done anything else except for these two shows with y'all. Shocky was on one maybe last week or something with me, but other than that, it's just you guys. It's just an echo it's chamber like a wolf of idiots pack. <laughs> yeah. yelling like at we're... the same, yelling about the same stuff. Or a wolf pack well, howling at the same. That's what moon. Slack is. <laughs> Yeah, Slack is, uh, look, look what Star Wars meme I found on Reddit today. That's myself included. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh, I like my JJ meme today. I'll explain I it for like the audience too, real cause... quick. What do Wanda and JJ Abrams have in common? I don't know no, what. No vision. No vision. <laughs> That's right. Like the, oh, shit. I got a Jawa loose in my room. So, sorry, guys. I got to kill this thing. Hold on. Uh, 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 okay. Jawas are easy, easy to kill. Uh, Coots, you've, I don't think you've ever heard uh, when uh, I can detect a nu- nu- nuclear launches being detected, uh, being launched. Um, you ever played StarCraft? I played StarCraft 2. Oh, okay. So you know when you la- launch a nuke or s- someone launches a nuke at you, y- you can hear nu- nuclear launch detected. I got the uh, um, uh, Protoss for version from nuclear the uh, original launch game. Nuclear launch detected. Yeah, and and I'm in a pharmacy one day. I can't remember <laughs> CVS or Walgreens or some sh- shit. And I kid you not, the phone goes off. Off. It's my text message, like my st- standard text message thing from my uh, family chat, and and um, it goes nuclear launch detected. And she's like, "Oh my god, is that real?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm in the military." So de- <laughs> So you like des- get full full military dress and you get wide eyes. Whoa! You drop to the ground wish, and put a plastic wish. bag over your face. <laughs> yeah, you should have sprinted out. Uh, everybody, get out of the building. Wait, Coots, how I old just, are you? 
I'm 35. Oh, so you're older than me, but you just somehow missed the first StarCraft? Because I played this. I played years of yeah. that waiting for StarCraft, too. You know what I was playing back then? A little bit of Command and Conquer, mm-hmm. Red Alert 2. Mm-hmm. All right. A little bit of Command and Tiberian Sun. I played those also. And yeah. some Age of Empires 2. He's got a, he's got some more RTS. I would just make sure because like I've, even yeah. though I've owned both for years, I've still played more StarCraft One just because we played it for years, waiting for them to actually release the game they announced years ago because it's Blizzard, and I think the situation mm-hmm. they're in right. this year, I think both their projects they're working on, they're like 2022, which is like Diablo Four and Overwatch Two, which was like promised two years ago, um, and then we got so bored Fuck of the Overwatch. original StarCraft because if you play it online. These days, it's just a bunch of Koreans who will destroy you, unless you're just playing with <laughs> no. friends. And you can't even like chat to them because they would have Korean characters. And there was no ranking system in the first StarCraft, so eventually we started playing yeah, World was. of Warcraft. Only so that we had some Blizzard to keep playing between StarCraft and StarCraft Two. Yeah, there was a ladder ladder system on the original BattleNet. On the original one, yeah. On the StarCraft mm-hmm. one, well, I uh, yeah, I don't remember it. Nerd argument alert. <laughs> I it's it is the it is te- tech tech uh today's uh uh special weekly segment supposed to be tech segment. Sweet, so I brought so, in tech. So fucking gaming is, is great. Yeah, I know. Coots Coots unknowingly gave us our our tech segment t- today go, talking baby. video games. It's just natural. It just comes to me. R- RTS is so so did any of you guys I know uh Coots more than likely than than uh Nick, but uh, Homeworld? You know what? My buddy and I, what, Homeworld came out about 99, 2000, mm, 98, something like that. 98, 99, somewhere right around Man, there. Man, we yeah. had a PC that was trying to push Homeworld that was just Could not it? Oh, it was <laughs> slagging this thing. But we, I was really excited about kind of just the open world concept that it was build your ship and explore the universe. Mm-hmm. And obviously, we have dozens of games out there that do that these days, but... Uh, yeah, it seemed like Homeworld was the first one to really try that as a as a sort of um, uh, really like dive deep into the concept kind of a thing, and uh, we weren't ready for that when I was thirteen. Yeah, uh, they got the third one in, in development now, which of course has me super excited. Wow, but, that's a big well, delay between sequels. The third yeah, one, yeah, right. we were just talking about the nineties a second ago. Well, they. <laughs> They released an HD remaster a now couple years stall. ago. Yeah, let you stall a few years. <laughs> and uh, then use that engine for the new one. <laughs> right. And then I, uh, they released the uh, Sands of uh, Karak, which is like a prequel. And that was released um, afterwards in between. So we've had ho- Homeworld. I've had more Homeworld. Homeworld content than I have fucking Half Life content. Or I guess Valve, to be fair, StarCraft content is the same. There's two StarCraft games, even though I, that one's split into like hey, three the parts. Story's complete as far as I'm concerned with with StarCraft. I don't need it. I've never any, finished anymore. a single player in any version of StarCraft. I don't think I even have <laughs> the third expansion. Well, there aren't even expansions when StarCraft two. They're little old did games. You, did you finish uh, all three parts of StarCraft two? No, I don't even think I got. Was it like? Was it just uh, um, just downloadable? Just DLC? No, each on one cost the, the full price of a what? game. So oh, then yeah. the Terran I version, don't... the Zerg version, and then the oh, hell Protoss no. I version. I didn't do that at all. Yeah, <laughs> it. I didn't make it through the Terran game because I'm all about multiplayer with that shit. Was it? Was it the? Was it the? Was the first one the Terran yeah. one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, like Sons yeah. Of I bet I've got that box. Yeah, now. Sons of Liberty. Yeah. <laughs> so. So you got Liberty, like Rainer's uh, the star when you play single player. Who yeah. doesn't like Rainer's yeah, one of your best space cowboys up right up there with Star yeah, Wars and some other the, franchises. Something of the Swarm and Heroes no. Heart of Darkness. It's not Heroes something of the like Swarm, that. but I've got a box back here in this closet that I've just kind of labeled the old media mm-hmm. box. And it's got DVDs, CDs, no laser disc or anything like that. Oh, but, that'd be a bigger uh, yeah, box. I, we should roll roll through that one day <laughs> on uh, podcast. I still keep my DVDs on my shelf with my Blu-rays because I have a giant like Best Buy like holds three thousand shelf. Nice. Mm. I, I had I to need... remove GameCube from that shelf Do... this week to fit on Oof. Switch games. <laughs> Do you know how d- difficult it is to find a standard media like? 
uh, shelf, like one that's only got a, a depth of 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 uh, five to to seven inches, so you don't have like you know four or five inch depth. Yeah, yeah. You're using that's a, what I have. A bookshelf. Yeah, I it's hard to get by the, like those ten today. years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It even yeah. has uh, earthquake proof the... things you put in the wall. Not just I bought in California, <laughs> but because it's, it would be so front heavy because it's like half the depth of a deep Blu-ray. So the whole thing would be leaning right. forward. Do you know uh, the uh, quick hack for that? Easy, real easy for you your, your games with... and blu raves. What? Uh, they fit on there too. No, no. What's that? They fit on there too. They probably... fit on, but they go so, so far back. What I'm saying is for like me, I don't want to use a bookshelf for my Blu-rays because I'll end up with, like I said, like a four-inch, five-inch ga- gap. That's how uh, my between tops end up on my shelf. <laughs> and right. So, anyways, the the hack, the the engineering thing that you do do is you you go get a couple of t- two by fours and you just cut them and then uh uh put them behind however many you want mm. to bring your shelf forward. And then you can hide your and drugs there, there behind you the fake drawers. Mm. So you have all that it, makes space. it look nicer. You can keep your cocaine. <laughs> that could be your hiding spot for the tesseract. Ooh. Sure. Well, because look, I <laughs> I I'm one of those pe- people, Coots. I haven't had you on to ask this, but but um, how much of an audio visual file are, are you when it comes to watching movies with high effects? Um, not so much audio. A little bit more. I'm a little bit more discerning when it comes to video. But even still, I don't really have the hardware necessary. Like, it's difficult for me to convince old girl who doesn't give a shit. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna go drop a uh, two two grand on a new 4K TV or whatever. Mm. Really, I'm just kind of running with, you know, just a Best Buy sound bar and. Uh, I have a Best Buy sound know. bar. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> like I, I generally I'm fine with it. <laughs> Well, okay, you so you're so right you're, into you're, the mic. You're one of those. You're you're per- perfectly fine with um, uh, uh, doing your uh, most of your movies like streaming. Like you're not out oh, there yeah, buying yeah. physical. Well, yeah, have I'm you not, seen yeah, the I'm not buying the Criterion collection of stuff. Just to, yeah, no, that's not me. Because uh, I, I stream. I've, stuff. Uh, Kyle, have you then seen the comparison someone released this week of uh, streaming stills versus DVD stills, and the DVD does look sharper than streaming. Even with like fast mm. internet, because it's well, still like yeah, c- it's a physical and, thing and, that and we have in our house. No, yeah. and that would depend on the the. I would they were they were using very specific setup. Blu-rays, not DVD. If um, I said DVD, I meant Blu-ray the entire time. Oh, but okay. DVDs look yeah, worse Blu-ray. than streaming always. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but it only so some some you know big AV guys. Or girls or whatever will will people be people. They they'll want their <laughs> their <people>. fucking <laughs> com comedies to be optimized visually as much as their uh Avengers Endgame. While no. me, I'm okay streaming a comedy. Yeah, but I want that full uncompressed. Uh, because I've got the I've got an older you know setup, but I've got a a setup. And that can take advantage of, you know, a a full Blu-ray with um, at least 5.1 channels. You know, I, I, I can do that. So I like the f- physical media, but now I can't fucking store it. And that's the whole Yeah, that's my you know problem. What? But here's what I do, Kyle. purpose of this ar- ar- conversation is I can't store I think my, my media. I only <laughs> own without the hat. 15 <laughs> movies that I bought digitally. Every other movie I have digitally, which is about 500... I purchased the physical copy and got the digital version. Like, so if I like, if I really like a movie, like even if I'm like, that was a good, like decent comedy. Like Mike and Dave, we net need wedding dates. Most people hate it. I right. don't think it's great. It was good enough that I bought it on Blu-ray for ten dollars at Target. So I would rather, <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, it's a comedy, but I'd always pop in the Blu-ray before I do the online thing, just because it does. If I have them both, why not use the higher def? Yeah. I think that what I've decided in the last couple of years without ever uttering this out loud until now is that if I am going to most of the things that I watch in this house, I'm watching shit I've already seen before. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I, I'm I'm okay with going back and rolling through No Country for Old Men streaming it Fuck because yes. I've, I know I fucking have it. I don't want to go get it. That's fine. Yeah. And if I'm watching, I'm guilty it of that too. Fir- but. 
if I'm watching it for the first time, I'm in the theater, except now there's no fucking theater. Or something. Yeah. So that has kind of thrown a wrench into my film watching situation. But, um, yeah, that's kind of always been my thing is I know what I'm looking at here. I don't need to go get the lost boys, mm-hmm. you know, 4k <laughs> re- remaster or something. It, yeah. Like that. And these yeah, days no. you especially don't need to buy shit. Cause it, it, I used to buy TV seasons, like every TV season, mm-hmm. the shows I like now it's like, no, Better Call Saul will be on Netflix forever. Oh, Westworld will be on HBO forever. I never need to own right. it at home. It's always there. I will say this, though. Um, while, while Disney has has made sure their extras are, are there on the, the streaming site, the majority of streaming uh, services don't offer any, any extras, and and extras have already been uh, disappearing from Blu-rays th- themselves, and and where you you might get w- one commentary track. While back in the day of d- DVDs, you used to get like director and producer commentary, then then director and cast it commentary, then cast all, like, on the director. The bloop, bloopers, cuts. Yeah, yeah, but the bloopers would be like I always like a writer director commentary, and in Marvel, it's often the same person. And basically all the Marvel movies do it. Like, I've listened to the commentary more than once for mm-hmm. Endgame with the Russos and their writers. And whenever a movie doesn't do it, or like even Last Jedi, I don't know about Rise of Skywalker because I will not buy that movie or watch it a second time. <laughs> even Last Jedi has like an hour and a half documentary about the film. And it's like, that's cool. I want, But I want to hear more from the writers. On the Fight Club Blu-ray, there's like five commentaries on the 10th anniversary and yeah. one of them is the writer of the movie and the writer <laughs> of the book. And they talk about set stories. They don't talk about the process of writing. And it really pissed me off. Oh, wow. Spe- speaking of David Fincher, I think one of the movies that I love the most from the last 10 or so years that has some of the best bonuses and special features is The Social Network, directed by David Just Fincher. Just the regular version? Writer. Or is there a criterion version of that out? Because I have the regular I, I'd, I'd version. I'd have to go back and check, but there's a there's a whole sort of mini doc with uh, with uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Atticus Ross who talk about recording that Academy Award winning soundtrack. Uh, that's really mm-hmm. really excellent, and uh, there's some really cool features in there. So yeah, that's that's definitely something I hadn't maybe considered with the streaming mm-hmm. streaming angle. I agree with Kyle, but let me update you on two of them that do have the special features. Kyle, Voodoo has every special feature, including the commentary. If you're to buy a movie okay, there or okay. rent a movie. I think you have to buy the movie. If you're renting it, it's out earlier. It doesn't even have any special features yet. Um, okay, okay. And Amazon, who does it the shittiest way, every special feature is at the end of the video file. So Avengers Endgame appears four hours long on Amazon because they just tacked on the special features in a row on the end of the file. So you just watch the whole movie and the special features Jeez. are built That's, into the film. But Voodoo does a really good job with it if you ever want to be like... This movie I love is ten dollars cheaper on Vudu right now. It'll have all the same special features as yeah. the Blu-ray. <laughs> I, I've always been a huge fan of of behind the scenes stuff, and the more raw a studio and or producer slash and or fucking di- director, the more raw that they'll allow the the behind the scenes stuff to be. And I'm sorry if you guys can hear the dogs barking in the background um I cannot, but so. <laughs> uh um the uh more they allow them to to sh- show the more interesting the docu documentary is take the episode one documentary i actually Wars, have not seen it because i only own that on vh well wait actually is it on you the can Blu-ray find it set? on youtube it's on the whole thing's on youtube oh okay it, it should be on the well, Blu-ray the Blu-ray Saga. has really shitty special features for even having an extra disc. I'm going to be real. I have the Saga. Well, the original collection before they did right. all these n- new ones. <laughs> so, um, anywho, uh, Coots, did you ever see that? The episode one documentary? He? No, I don't okay. believe I have. Is it George so Lucas looking great. stressed it's, for yeah, two hours? It's... <laughs> Is this yeah. the one where? Is this the one where he says, the scenes rhyme? Is that this one? <laughs> Uh, maybe, like, yeah, yeah. That's the whole point think, of the repetition that even J.J. Abrams used. It's like, it's, it's well, all no, repeating itself and it rhymes. Um, he, it's, 
what's great about it is, like I said, it, it, he allowed and and Fox Studios allowed cameras to run when he walks out the room and left footage in of when he decides Jake Lloyd's going to be uh, uh, Anakin, right? Wow, wow. And everyone else in the room is just like, oh, no, no, <laughs> and George really? is like, yep, he was this is wrong. the one. <laughs> he leaves the room. The camera keeps rolling, and everyone in there is like, I would have went with this kid. I oh, don't, my God. It, like, they leave it in the documentary. now. Kevin Smith does that, but he doesn't present the honest picture. He takes out the bad parts. Right. Um, like now, Jason Mewes being take, fucked up. He takes that out of the Clerks documentary. Right. Uh, take uh, the episode 7, 8, or or 9, I'm sure. I haven't seen 9 special features either, but 7 or 8, you know, behind great. the scenes. It's an hour and a half documentary. They, dude, they are so sterile, though. They are, you are only seeing what they want you. Everyone is <laughs> yep. ha- happy. Everyone's loving it. Everyone I don't is, know. Is, it's the garbage. last Jedi they won so by the shitty. end of it. Ryan Johnson's like, I'm losing my, fu-. he doesn't say fuck, but he's like, I'm losing my fucking mind. Like, I hope I can make it to the end of this. It'll be the biggest accomplishment ever, but I'm pretty miserable right now. <laughs> That's actually what I said in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a last Jedi liker. I like that trilogy until Rise of Skywalker shit on it. And it's like, Honestly, we could do 45 minutes on just this, true. but I think the entire sequel trilogy is garbage and should be absolutely thrown in the trash can. You guys can all de- definitely go on to any of our uh, uh, or any um, uh, app to find uh, the Cantina series and, and listen to that. However, uh, right now on YouTube and SoundCloud because of how distribution works on other sites. That's the only place you're going to find our prequel and original trilogy uh, uh, reviews. And sequel um, trilogy. Uh, and the sequels and will be going up there films. as well. But what? what? Yes. The, there you go. Shadows of the Empire. That for a friend but what, 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 I'm, what I'm getting at is go check out our, our reviews, the Cantina reviews, uh, YouTube and SoundCloud because – uh, uh, the other ones they won't publish it. Though. Oh, really? I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. So yeah, I over advertise so. you. But if you go to our much podcasting you know? site, you can listen to Coops. all of that shit, dude. I, so I had tons of books, and I ended up throwing them out a couple years ago. You're when talking they were to Kyle, kinda, the EU lover. W- when they were rendered uh, Star Wars Legacy, I was like, motherfucker. Yeah. Well, originally the, the EU. Yeah. <laughs> April, April, 20, April 25th, 2014. Yeah, right? all, all that work that we had put in learning about uh, Luke's Jedi Praxium, Kip Duron and the Sun Crusher. <laughs> nice. You know, Mara and Jade or whatever. The, yes, Thrawn's the, back the with the OG Thrawn. Man, I remember like jumping on a Reddit thread one time, and I was like, Thrawn's not coming back. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Look at me now. Look at me now, guys. The original twins and then the younger sibling. Jason yep. and Jaina mm. and Anakin. Yep. That makes more sense than oh. the movies to me. But I, I don't know. Of course they have to do what, it. They, were also, also, they what can't what be canon I just when they Alliance tattoo. I know, and you've mm-hmm. seen Kyle's half and half tattoo, because he can't pick yep, a side. I have. We're talking about rebel versus imperial tattoos, since you guys can't see. Yeah. But um I don't know, but they contradict these shits. So long as it's a multiverse, they all couldn't be canon. The Boba Fett... Because Lucas broke it when he did the prequels. He broke the continuity of the Boba Fett book, which is his origin. So, anyway, I think we should move on to Marvel. Because we have a lot to talk right, about pre- Marvel. I'm sure we could do this all night. But, uh, you, I could do this all day. Are you trying to direct my show? Are you, you trying to direct my show? I'm trying to help no, us out of Star Wars. Because that segue. <laughs> that wasn't keep it on the rails. You that segue. You can't have that segue. Fine. No, I will no, take my segue and drive it off a we're, cliff we're, like the creator we're, of We're segue. still here on... I'm talking to the new guy and, and trying to get him <laughs> into the show. And, and you're sitting here trying to usurp my control. Mm. Motherfucker, you are fired. It feels like oh, the episode whoa, of uh, like WandaVision two weeks ago. <laughs> Burn! <laughs> No, in all seri- seriousness, <laughs> though, uh, Coots, did you come out in uh, the black or the red on on uh, su- Sunday night? You don't have to say amounts. Are 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 I you? I had no. I you know I had some money and some squares, but mm. I I think I was actually so hammered by the time I vented <laughs> my buddy the money. I don't know if I won or lost. 
Oh, uh, God. <laughs> but you will recall in the video that you uh, graciously re-edited and re-rendered, Kyle. Yes. With 100% more, was, uh, 100% more coots. 100% more coots. I think I said 35, 31 bucks. Mm. I think the Bucks score was pretty close. It was 31 think, to 9, nine yeah, was the final score, I, I believe. I did not predict. I mean, and I said, you know, the Buccaneers linebackers were going to create havoc. And mm-hmm. yay, verily, it came to be. The fucking Chiefs didn't score a single touchdown, and that's crazy. Yeah. I needed them to score once more in any way, any any other way, and I would have doubled what I won, which I'm very, very, very happy with what I won, but I would have dub- doubled what I won <laughs> had the mm. Chiefs gotten that field goal or gotten a touchdown, just one, one more, and then nothing else. It would have been a really, really great payday instead of just a good good payday so. um anyway no, no, here's one um, more text story that goes with the super bowl i assume you guys sure, both watched sure. it on television hmm, I wa- no I did, I did watch it on television i mean but like i was actually local channels. Uh, sleeping <laughs> oh i watched it on cbs all access and right ah. after they sang the anthem it dropped out for 15 minutes no wow. shit. And of course, they spent the rest of the show advertising for Paramount Plus, which is CBS All Access. All Access. And you're like, access, someone, yeah. a lot of people are getting fired there, and a lot of people are not subscribing because they jumped on to watch the Super Bowl, and CBS didn't realize how many people would do that. How do you underestimate the number of people who would jump on for the Super Bowl? And the site right. crashed. We, we almost missed two minutes of the game, except for my friend Andrew found a pirate site to watch it until I could get it back on my Xbox. And my computer. They don't, I don't think they realize when m- most people, when they cut the co- cord, they don't replace it with it, an HD antenna, which is a yeah. one time purchase to get, you know, my parents over the air. did, but yeah, it's easier to get CBS I all access too, too, even but like most people seven don't. days free if you were going to watch the Super right. Bowl. Exactly. That's that's what I'm saying is, is how did like CBS not realize? The only reason I host this Super Bowl party because I don't normally watch it is because my best friend wanted to watch it and I'm like, my parents on CBS All Access. You guys can come over. I'll buy snacks. You bring the beer. <laughs> there you go. Anyways, uh, during the Super Bowl, uh, there wasn't actually he a whole lot. That, that's to, a hell of a segue. That's a Look, to talk about. Great segue. <laughs> and uh, I was severely disappointed by by the lack of s- stuff to talk about, except for one one thing: the Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer. Yes. Which I was underwhelmed. Really, Nick? I know you oh lo- loved God. it. Go, go well, ahead and uh, uh, can can control yourself. But go ahead, go. <laughs> no, I'm jizzing, man. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming over here. Um, okay, so to go over my full history, which has been said on this show and Breaking Geek, um, four years ago, uh, Joseph Jammer Medina. When he was editor in chief, challenged me to write a Breaking Geek because Breaking Geek come the podcast comes from a column I wrote, which also is the name of my old website. Um, he's like, "Why don't you write uh, a column about the genres you want to see in the MCU?" So two things mm-hmm. I said were, "I want to see a horror Doctor Strange two directed by Sam Raimi." Which is happening. Oh. This is four years ago, and I said, "I want to see a buddy cop show with." Winter Soldier, but I also said Hawkeye because that's one of my favorite comics. Matthew Rosenberg, The Tales of Suspense 101 through 106. And it's a Falcon. No, it's a Winter Soldier and Hawkeye buddy cop comic. You know, mm-hmm. where they're arguing, they're bickering with each other and stuff. And that's what this is. This is what I dreamed of. This is a buddy cop fucking show. My favorite genre. Love Lethal Weapon. Love Rush Hour. And now it's Falcon and the Winter Soldier with two super powered, or you know, or at least have suits and stuff, guys who are just going to bicker with each other while defeating Baron Zemo and the Flag Smashers and possibly the Thunderbolts. It's it's a dream come true, and it's from. It feels like the other cat movies based on the trailer, and the composer's the same, so they could fuck it. Marvel can always possibly fuck it up. But after Wandavision, I'm like, this could literally be Captain America four. Only without cap, obviously, and six hours long, because it it doesn't look cheap either. Like it no. looks like the movies, as we've been promised. Unlike 
Sometimes Mando slipped a little bit below, but this looks like a trailer for a movie. I wouldn't even call it a trailer for a TV show. And I think this is one of Marvel's top 10 trailers ever, saying that it is a movie and a TV show. But as Kyle said, he's not as into it because they somehow struck... No, no, struck, I didn't say I wasn't in, they, into it. They somehow it. struck two of my biggest fascinations, which is those two characters and the shield. I never said I wasn't into oh. it. I said that the, this trailer was, was uh, underwhelming. I think the fir- first trailer like the we got teaser? was better. Yeah, I think the t- teaser was, was better. Um, I don't this know. One, Seeing Zemo watch walk with his mask in his hand and saying i don't want any more superheroes i'm not (laughs) i'm not saying that there wasn't good shots i'm saying that to me the the cutting of this didn't necessarily feel as smooth and be because it was a bit jarring the way they cut it and were showing it some things didn't land for me uh as as well as i bet they will during yeah. the show, and that's all. So that's all I'm saying. So it didn't feel as clean as a normal Marvel trailer. I felt it felt like yeah. a trailer for second trailer for an event Ultron or second mm-hmm. trailer for Winter Soldier, where it's like here's Not all the me. action scenes. I don't know. Really what fast. Do you, what did you think, da, 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 da. Nick? I've got bad news for you, buddy. <clears throat> I think that the genre buddy cop film has already been done in the MCU, <laughs> and that's Iron Man three. By buddy cop extraordinaire Shane Black. Yeah, but it's not. I, <laughs> I, I realize wrong? he wrote. I mean, he directed it and he co-wrote it. But Rhodey's not enough to be a buddy cop. It's less so than even Beverly I, Hills Cop. I'm just the saying. Third act is a buddy I've cop already, movie. I've already seen it. I think it's. I mean, you're probably right in that. That's what this is going to be. And I think that right off the bat in the trailer, you know, it alludes to the sort of you know, uh, elbow to the rib relationship that, that, uh, Sam and Bucky are going to have. And I, I like that. I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't think that that's going to distract from the, <clears throat> you know, very serious nature of what I'm sure we'll get into. I'm sure that, you know, this, this genre and what we're going to like, the actual material lends itself really well to what's going on right oh, now yeah. in American politics. And it's going to be just uh, as dark as the other cat film. Yeah. It's not going to be light. I, I <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. But yeah, as far as the genre goes, and if it's really going to play around with that genre, like many Marvel projects do, whatever, I'm fine with it. I'll, I mean, I'll allow it. I'm not going to throw a penalty flag and push it back five <laughs> yards, but it doesn't do much oh, for me. And like honestly, I hated Iron Man. I hated Iron Man three. So I'm hoping that we can uh, maybe introduce uh, some new elements to that genre and kind of break the mold a well, little bit. Well, you got the third there, too. You got Sharon Carter. Seems like she's a big fucking deal. And she can actually yeah, like that. fight Here we go on like early yeah. films. Yeah. Like, she hasn't been a big fighter in the past. She was there to point guns when Hydra took over. But she's never shown Emily us Black Van Widow Camp, moves. action superstar. Well, let's just re- remember that in the comic books, she's the one that shoots Captain America with she's a magic bullet. And kill, she's the one who kills Cap. Yeah. Yeah. But they're ever going to. So, I mean, they can't do that now. She Cap's retired. But some people. But here's an interesting trailer. There's thing I going saw. to be a new Captain America. That's what, I'm, you know, whether he goes by it or not, yeah. Falcon. Well, you know, we're hoping Falcon ends that's up. That's where as, US agent you know, comes into play. And, and you, I think I, you watched the I same Easter egg video as me, but he has a good point where it's like. Someone else needs the shield more than Falcon, because Falcon Falcon's wings are almost better than a fucking shield. Except for not <laughs> like they cover, they can't be projectile, but they block him from right. everything. Even but it's what it War. stands stands for. That's true. That's 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 Which is the why whole, I like, like they pick thing. Sam Wilson over uh, Bucky, like in the comics, because Sam Wilson's. Um, Captain America run going into Endgame was pretty great because he dealt with more of the social issues, whereas Cap, Hydra Cap, was fighting, like, pretending to fight Hydra, you know, and stuff. And he was dealing with, like, hey, police brutality and stuff like that. I don't think we'll get a lot of that in this show. I'm not even sure Mm. that they'll acknowledge in, like, an actual sentence that they picked U.S. agent over Falcon because he's black. I don't think they'll say that. They'll probably bring the Sokovia Accords into effect to be like, like I'm sure it's Thunderbolt Boss. This is like Thunderbolt Ross is always like, I need someone who works for the United States, not some vigilante wearing, mm-hmm. you know, carrying the shield. 
Yeah. I, I, I completely agree. And, and here's, here's the fact, whether people want to, to accept it or not. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's, you know, bad people in, in, uh, uh, America at all, all levels of government and, and civilian, uh, uh, work, workplaces, but trust me, um, uh, there's no, no way in, in this, uh, 2021 day and age that, that, uh, that, uh, um, the military would not be incredibly happy to have, uh, yeah, no, that situation happen the where Captain America hands decision. it off to, to a minority. Someone so like I don't, Ross I don't want to see making the decision, not the military. They don't get to decide it, yeah. who he's their cap. It's either the president or like his secretary. Isn't Thunderbolt that's, Ross like secretary of defense? That's what I'm. That's what I'm. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is there's, there's not gonna. It's, it's not gonna. It's not gonna. Ha- it's not realistic. The, the idea of, of race being an issue in the MCU, absolutely. Disney won't touch it though. Yeah. Not, not, not even re- remotely on the ra- on the r- radar that they have that's that true. they have given yet. Disney won't even do and Demon they in the Bottle back in the day, and that was very right. disappointing. Th- they. <laughs> And they can, they can. I'm not saying that they can't, they can, but that they haven't. And because they haven't established that that there's, you know, this this underground, you know, racist groups still like because you haven't established it's that. Just Hydra. I don't. Grimmick Hydra. It, it's automatic. Right. That's the racist group. But <laughs> but Hydra even had uh, uh, so Hispanics fascist. and. <laughs> And pe- people, so were they really racist? Well, they're, 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 they're a break off from the Nazi started out, party originally. Started out as a bra- branch of the Nazi yeah, party. It's right? hard not. It's but hard to escape that with your history. MCU like people don't name people Adolf anymore, right? But MCU <laughs> Hydra, MCU Hydra, completely like Broke off separated because themselves Disney wanted from to show one, the Nazis. To show one exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which, no, so, it, was still, it was Paramount back then, but yeah. In a PG-13 franchise, it's better to make Hydra its own thing rather than being like, look at all them swastikas in this superhero movie. Man, these guys are even worse than the Nazis. <laughs> the Nazis distance themselves from Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a funny way to put it. And that's how, oh my God. that's why the best villains are Nazis or people Nazis hate more than themselves, like Indiana Jones <laughs> and Captain uh, America. <laughs> I got one of my degrees in creative writing and I had, uh, in, in a different paper entirely, I had uh, one of my writing teachers uh, kind of explore the thought process of using Nazis as cannon fodder throughout media and writing like a master's dissertation on that's great. what that means in the ultimate, in like the what relevant yeah. cultural sort of way. And uh, I thought that was really interesting that we've dehumanized them on purpose because they deserve to they're be the of easiest. Course. And uh, yeah, they're the well, easiest. Especially one, if but, you're a you Jewish know. director like Spielberg, who's like, and yeah. Jones, <laughs> Nazis. <laughs> have, yeah. Have, have, how long, how long do we have? I mean, I guess we, every couple of years, America at least gets to sort of renew the lease on Nazis being the villain. Cause we have neo Nazis popping up. Yeah. All but I think year, we've but, also moved on. To like, um, I read, okay, has anyone read Rainbow Six? The book's no. about eco-terrorists. Mm-hmm. The script they wrote only keeps the characters' names, and it's about Middle Eastern terrorists. That's our new Nazis. Like, especially sure. if it's a spy flick. Unless it's Bond, oh, yeah. where it's always like, someone in Ru- someone who's not Russia or the U.S. is trying to start World War Three. Some individual <laughs> is like part of a company. It's it's really interesting to go back to the years post 9-11 from 2002 to, say, 2010 or whatever, and all the films that had a slightly, you know, 9-11 slant to them. Yeah. And just the film, like the different directors and writers takes on exploring 9-11 in their own way and the aftermath of it. And <clears throat> I've watched uh, Body of Lies. Uh, with oh, Scott's with Body fat of Russell Crowe and Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes, and, <laughs> and Chubby Leo. And honestly, I couldn't make heads or tails of the movie. I thought it was fairly garbage, but it's just one, hey, one more director is going to go kind of put his take in 
and uh, hey, let's see what's going Did on over you... in the Middle East. And of course, it's filled with cynicism about our political apparatus, and yeah. as it as it should be, perhaps. But um, yeah, everybody was exploring that Which, at the time because they were the hip new villains. I'll say this before. Actually, forget. I was not. I was going to guess way too off topic by bringing up Munich and the fact that. It's an old movie, but it ends with a shot of the Twin Towers. But the whole point right. is, mm. uh, Marvel's done that in a different way. Um, the original Spider-Man trailer had the Twin Towers in it. Mm-hmm. And then in That's the right. movie, they that. removed them, and they also had the... That was what created the New York Coming Together movie moment that Amazing Spider-Man copied, where it's like, we're New York, bitch! We're gonna throw stuff at your stupid Green Goblin helmet. <laughs> yeah, like that scene is would not have happened without nine eleven. Yeah, oh, I much would have preferred to not have to have. Well, that scene. I like I hate the uh, <laughs> I hate the Amazing Spider Man version I know with the you... cranes. I'm a huge sucker for the first Spider Man. So, um, it's uh, yeah. Let me ask you something about the trailer we're discussing, because I don't know much about Zemo, but this is, <laughs> this is me just speculating. I'm guessing, but. That's him next to that statue towards the beginning of the trailer, mm-hmm. right? You but can it's tell not his because, hand with the bullets. <clears throat> so you can tell because he's got that jacket with that, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. you know, sort of like the the fur on it or whatever. Absolutely. And I was sitting there, sitting there looking at the statue. I'm like, that's got to be like a tribute to Sokovia. Mm-hmm. It is. A, and the lake like behind it is the crater. Uh, yep. Left. Okay. Because he's still, I watched, I mean, the video uh, Kyle and I both watched about it. It's like almost everyone's kind of got the renewal after the blip. Or it's like, oh, my family's back and shit. But Zemo is right. like Wanda. His family's been dead since before the blip. Right. He's still fucking pissed. And, so, and the same video kind of made maybe how he escapes is the fact blipped, that, yeah, the, enough out. people were blipped out at the you know, super no, security thing. He, he yeah, I agree blipped, with you. I don't think the video out. said that. I agree. Yeah. He blipped out, and then he blipped oh. back into existence, not in the cage, yep. and was like, mm. oh, fuck. Like, well, I don't know I'm what the hell's going on. My family's but... not. Yeah. Yeah. And Avengers didn't bring back my my family? Like, right. Well, I mean, they could, yeah. but yeah, it's the same thing. Where it's like, I want to He's destroy to all superheroes. About, about yeah. I love the premise of the show. Uh, I'm down with everything that I saw. I laughed at the jo- jokes in this trailer. Uh, like I said, it's not that it's a bad trailer. I just, I like the other one better. So this one was, therefore, The other one's under- good too. Well, me, well, me. The other one's good too. I just yeah. like the more, de- the more, uh, you know, what they added to the relationship between them. That, you know, the, the action, mm-hmm. like, there's no more way to point out a buddy cop movie than to have a therapy scene for some reason. <laughs> like, yes. it's the most, it's mo- I like it, but still the most on the nose way to fucking yeah. do that in the world um wow but yeah i that's been the marvel project i've been most excited about movies or television since endgame ended so yeah i am stoked <laughs> i'm excited about it uh again i'm i'm i saw the trailer and i'm like yeah okay sure i'll definitely watch it of course but you know as far as the wide-reaching implications of what may or may not come out of this story um, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I expect much. And I think that's a good thing for me. Uh, I like to go out. You guys have talked to me enough to realize that I, I try not to actively buy into hype or have <laughs> expectations because I've been fucking let down so much. And I know you guys, Game of Thrones. That, <coughs> yeah, exactly. Or yeah, there's tons of stuff and I'm just like, Oh God. So I really just try to go into it with a clear mind. I'm excited about it. I think, I think that, um, all of the actors that are involved. I think Anthony Mackie is super cool. Sebastian oh, Stan yeah. is super cool. I'm glad that they're going to get their platform to tell their interesting story. But um, I'm just going to take it for what it is and roll with it. And then uh, I, hope- I really do. I hope they explore some of the themes about what it means to be an American and when you know uh, U.S. agent uh, replaces Cap. Is it real or is it a marketing ploy? And mm-hmm. some of that sort of stuff, manufactured patriotism and things like that. I'd love to see them explore that, uh, but whether or not we'll get it, I don't know. I'm just going to roll with it and try to have fun. Here's an interesting fact just from – I did personal research. All right, you guys, I researched something. Um, Ooh. Not really. It's just family thing. My mom loves all the movies, all of them. She doesn't have a negative thing to say about Incredible Hulk or Captain Marvel. She likes every MCU movie equally. Like, 
My dad goes and he's like, eh, there was too much special effects, so I almost fell asleep. <laughs> my mom goes and she's like, that was fun. So my mom has no interest in WandaVision because she doesn't like the sitcom angle. And I showed her the trailer for this and she's like, yeah, I'm going to make your dad watch this weekly because this is the Marvel I like. <laughs> and I was like, that seems ironic. I thought my mom would be more into the uh, fake sitcom thing than just like wanting straight up Falcon and the Winter Soldier action. But there you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know if I even. Yeah, let's let's we bring have up to how bring up how, the last how topic. funny. Let's let's bring no 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 oh, no no. Okay. I'm gonna bring up something funny funny or something uh re- related to what you said uh yesterday on uh oh, you're call me on some Marvel shit. Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. I think it was was where you made a joke about. Chris Evans coming back as Johnny Storm. <laughs> that became and a real. And then all of a sudden, we have today. a real, a real r- rumor coming from a g- giant freaking robot, freaking <laughs> robot. I really uh, don't want that to happen, y'all. No, I, it's super, I, it looked, I thought it was gonna be a Wandavision. It's just gonna be a, like a quick shot in Doctor Strange. <laughs> It's not gonna be like a. Moment, we know we know possibly, that Evans yeah. loves a good cameo because of his Thor: The Dark World. Uh, oh, appearance. but Loki playing right. in quotes. Chris Evans mm. is one of Captain America's best moments, where he's like, I don't know, he makes some really like just patriotic yeah. jokes, like he's a sucker. Awesome, right? <laughs> yes, you. It's great. The rumor and, is he's gonna uh, be in Doctor Strange two as a Cap version and uh, Johnny, right? Uh, I'm not sure about the cap version, but I know about the J- Johnny Johnny Sto- Storm. Um, it's we've also we've we've played on rumors that Captain America's coming back to do a Cap Hydra s- setup or story or Secret Invasion setup. Those have been around round. Um, where they connect with multiverses, you know, m- maybe. Um, I'm thinking more of C- Secret Invasion, especially considering we saw the oh, what yes. appears to be scroll, scroll, skull, skulls, skulls, scroll skulls, scroll skulls, scroll skulls, scroll skulls. <laughs> uh, scroll skull, skulls all over a wall in um the Falcon and Winter Soldier trailer, and it makes sense for those guys to connect to uh. Um, the scrolls, given the history with Shield and Nick Fury, which will tie into to Sword, which will also tie into Captain Marvel, Super uh, Secret Invasion, yeah, and Secret Inva- Invasion, yep. So and it's kind of cool because it's there's these, uh, unlike a giant rope, uh, with sm- small threads that came off. Last last saga, Infinity Saga. This is a whole bunch of small cords that that have small threads leading up up into a new rope of its own. You know, it's m- more like Nick said. There's we're gonna have we're gonna get to follow these really cool whole complete stories over several things but there'll be be tangents that lead to the other stuff and cr- crossover unlike last time which was a lot of individual stuff in the uh first one with just a little connection S- still a lot of little uh interconnected stuff in phase two and then by phase three they're like fuck it if you haven't seen the shit yet you guys are out of luck. We're not explaining it anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm actually rolling through the entire MCU uh, with my fiance. She has seen none of these films. I think I've told you guys this. Mm-hmm. And we're, it's really interesting how much uh, in, you know, even phase one and phase two, they really just don't even start talking about most of what's going on in the broader MCU. Mm-hmm. You know, there's you get a little bit of, oh, it's a Tesseract. There's a bigger and, uh, world out there than you, Mr. Stark. Yeah, like, it's exactly, like the biggest exactly. moment. Shit like that. Yeah. But there's no, like, uh, hey, this goes to this, and this is this, until you get, in, like, fully into uh, Phase 3 and uh, start really, like, you know, paying attention to this stuff. So I think my fiance even now, doesn't really know where the story's going. She's just like, 
I have she, yeah. right now. There's no way that she could predict who Thanos is. He's been right. glimpsed and like you see that little bitty in cameo. With, yeah, yeah, and she's like, okay, I don't fucking know. I honestly thought he and was that's a scroll the, the first time I saw it because yeah. I'm like, there's a scroll like, chin right think there. Of, I never heard think of about Thanos. <laughs> Chris Evans appearing as Johnny Storm. The casual fan's gonna be like, what the fuck does that mean? And nobody fucking watched Fantastic Four when it came out. It sucked. No, okay. actually, it did pretty well. I watched it. It's awful. It's, I watched it's the sequel because it was it did free because well. I worked at the movie theater. Yeah. And I watched it and I was abs- like, what Chris the hell is this? absolutely the only reason I liked it. And he's it's, why a very I 90s, it's a very 90s Fantastic Four film. And yeah, it's not it's from as the bad 90s. As, <laughs> it's as bad as the 90s X-Men films. So yeah. it, that what I mean, it ble- that bleeds over but like think, you don't get to your real 2000s to like to 2003 i think it's the same thing as even evan peters though because i wrote an article today with quotes yes. from the creator and she didn't necessarily say he was quicksilver she said we just had an opportunity to use the actor we thought the audience would like that she didn't yeah. rule it out that he would be going an x-men going forward or a mutant going forward yeah. but it was more like oh we got him it was fun and my roommate yeah. who I watched my it's friend who I watched it with hasn't seen the X-Men films. So we had no fucking idea what the cameo meant. He thought it was the same actor. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? My fiance the other day, she saw him in something else and goes, Oh, that's Evan Peters. He's in American Horror Story. And I'm like, No, she's not gonna recognize this cameo <laughs> when she gets to WandaVision. Well, she won't like, know why. Ow. Yeah. 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 She'll I... be like, Oh, that's the guy from American Horror Story. Yeah. Look, here's here's the thing. Though they've built up enough of a of a of a audience that now now I think they can almost force you to go back and especially now that they that Disney owns all of the Fox shit, they can almost force you to go back because everyone at least knows one MCU super geek, right? Yeah, uh, or that's Marvel true. Like geek. my mom's statistics. So, statistically, me. that's true. And that just right. being so like, what's going on? <laughs> exactly. They'll call. They'll call that Who's the purple that face one dude, super geek, and that super geek will be like, oh, you gotta watch uh, Days of Future Past, Apocalypse, and and uh, uh, get incredibly uh, of responsible age and legal status o- only, drunk or 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 high, and uh, watch Dark Phoenix. Um, never, never. <laughs> strike that. No, get inebriated as fuck to watch anything la- labeled X Men. Anything. Fuck them all. But Dark mm, Phoenix doesn't have, have it in the title. So strong we'll take. What's that, Mr. Malone? I, if it doesn't have X Men in the title, there is pot- potential. That only leaves three films. <laughs> Dark Phoenix doesn't have X Men in the title. Oh, yeah, I want to. Read no, something it's technically X Men Dark Phoenix. Well, they never call it X-Men. The title is just Dark I Phoenix. I don't give a shit. I had they... all the posters and stuff at work. Duh, her... um, so my best friend is watching, uh, another different best friend is watching WandaVision, having seen almost no MCU movies. And he asks what he should watch. To be re- and I'm like, here, I'm going to give you a list of what you need to watch before finishing WandaVision, starting Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and starting mm-hmm. Loki. And here's my list. It's very short. I Bare bones. He needs Captain America the Winter Soldier to watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. He needs Age of Ultron to understand WandaVision. Uh-huh. He needs Civil War, again, to understand both WandaVision's relationship and, you know, Bucky and Cap's relationship. I made Infinity War, obviously. I gave him Captain Marvel because of Rambo. Uh-huh. And then uh, Avengers Endgame. And the only reason I included the Avengers is because they use that show again and that shot again in Endgame where Loki's like being walked out and then yeah, they and hey, the stone to that's him. as far as you know right now yeah, because yeah. it could be plot points that get introduced that uh, especially you know, since really Rhodey some stuff. is in Falcon and the Winter Soldier which I think that means the storyline could lead into Armor Wars whatever they're dealing yeah. with yep yep I always like those uh making a or at least discussing and pondering a list of of what you need to to yeah, see to watch this or used to c- come up with what you need to read to to get to this 
yeah. story in a in a comic arc. And I told him um, after that if he wants to get to uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which he's already heard the title of, I'm like, you need to watch Doctor Strange one. Spider-Man 3, the other Spider-Mans, and then watch Doctor Strange and the Multiverse is Madness, as far as we know. T- t- tell me what you think of the this, Coots. Since you, you, you're, you're going through them all again, you've seen them all, but you're, you're going through them all again. I came up with a, a formula that I thought was perfect for uh, someone to get a crash course through the Infinity Saga. It's 11 f- films out of the 23 only 11 and uh tell me what you think and it and it should be in this order all right cap 1 iron man uh avengers Gu- guardians avengers 2 uh S- S- civil war uh doc strange uh thor ragnarok infinity war ant-man and the wasp and endgame did you have Thor two on there, right? No. Oh, because I thought I thought the movies you would pick if you were to watch not... them all, you would pick the ones with Infinity Stones in particular. Nope. See, there's... I honestly that think movie that you can shit. Get, you you <laughs> yeah, you can get away with that because there's enough. I mean, the only time you ever Plus see the, the movie ether, jumps back the to next that time. Scene. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, That's more reason so to watch you, it. You've already been introduced to the Collector in the first Guardians movie. Yep. Um, I mean, I think that. I don't hate your list here, but I think you'd lose some context with the battle that takes place in Wakanda uh, if you don't Black have Black Panther. Panther. No, it does suck to not not get him in his his own whole whole movie, but through uh, uh, what we do get in Civil Civil War, it's true. We get enough to understand. We know the country who exists. He is. We've met him. And who yeah, he is as a, as a person. I think of that. So. Obviously didn't give my friends stuff like Guardians or other Stone movies. I'm just trying to get into the well, TV shows. I don't care if he understands the Stones. Yeah. Stuff, Infinity War. Well, here's what, he just wants here's to what know I was, what he needs to know for Loki, Falcon, and uh, Wanda. Yeah. I, I, I looked at it and I was like, you gotta, there's certain ca- characters that you want their, their solo movie there, there for, and there's others that what you get from the first Avengers film is enough for four. Yeah, I think and it covers I, I, the entire first phase. Honestly. Yeah, <laughs> and I really felt Cap's movie between the the Stones, um, uh, everything dealing with Shield, Hyd- Hydra, um, uh, the Tesseract itself, and and Red Skull. Uh, I thought all of that was highly Im- important. Uh, Red Skull Iron would be Man, helpful to know. You're right. Yeah, Iron Man. Do, do I need to say anything else? Uh, and then Avengers, you get er- everything else you need. You get everything you need you about. Definitely Thor. never you need get the Hulk everything movie you need ever about the Hulk. Yeah, we well, didn't even watch need. it. Yeah. at all. Yeah, I didn't even tell her it existed. If I told my <laughs> friend to watch them all, I'm tell I would tell him to skip that one and maybe Thor two, even though it does have a stone. It's still yeah. so fucking bad. <laughs> uh, the then the Guardians. I mean, it's you got us. You need the guardians for for infinity war mm-hmm. espe- especially um and then age of ultron i th- think is incredibly important to help set up civil war civil war h- helps you s- set up important the split to set up three whole characters like exactly yeah. uh one dies, doc but. strange is one of those movies again where it's the the stone and understanding and the multiverse uh, uh a realm First and mentioned. the multiverse yeah. yep uh thor ragnarok uh because it sets up Thor's whole arc, which is ma- massive, massive payoff Revenge. in in Infinity War and Endgame, and then of course the the last three uh, make sense because they're they all lead into you got Infinity War and then Ant Man and the Wasp and then uh, uh, Endgame. So, you are yeah. skipping Captain there Marvel because that's within the last three, but you, I knew you would mm-hmm. skip it. I just think it's more important for WandaVision, even if it's a bad movie, to know who Monica and Maria were and why Sword yeah. even exists. And, well, and the, especially if there are uh, scrolls in uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's going to be very important to know who the fuck the scrolls are. Yeah, if there's scrolls there and if there's 
uh, and if her astrophysicist friend it friend is is a scroll. Oh yeah, yeah, we talked about uh, that. Yeah, that's that's, and then like you said, the scroll hunters, and then we know there's like Cree sleeper cells on Earth and shit from Spider Man. Just one Far line, Spider Man was all. To- oh yeah. You know, they're so, out there, man. Oh. That's what my theory Anyways. is for the the trailer. Um, What's that? that? I we kind of discussed. You know how, like, yeah. If you watch behind the scenes, Coots. I don't know if you saw him mention this on Slack. There's a shot that is a bunch of scroll skulls on the wall. Um, right. It looks yeah, like I saw. Yeah. I saw this getting mentioned. Yes. Um, I think it's hard to tell. It looks because of the location it seems to be at, which is that kind of uh, crazy art place that even has van gogh art up it might just be yeah. like look at all my trophies i am a cree hunter or something like predator mm-hmm. or it could mm-hmm. be what's the coolest power a super villain could steal from the scrolls yeah uh the, yeah. the shape shift use their dna and create your own shape shifting uh technology and or you know dna Ooh. to inject yourself with and then now. the super skull gets created boom <laughs> so not not just that, but th- think about the secret invasion implications if humans are able to sh- shape shift or scroll human hybrid. Oh shit! Like Hulkling, and that what Hulkling is is he's a scroll human I hybrid or a scroll Cree hybrid Hulkling, or some shit. But yeah, he's- some of that stuff, you know, if you t- get too deep into that, it really alters the fundamental shape of the storytelling that you're trying to accomplish in the MCU like if suddenly that you you open the door wide that every character can shape shift you really shoot yourself in the dick as far as future storytelling so they'd have to figure out some way to nerf it Chris Skull I was right you know what I mean yeah like uh I love this comparison I always see it from like honest trailers or like uh pitch Ooh. meetings um they'll give a a second for that uh, the whole like in Star Trek 2 uh Into Darkness they cure death and suddenly it's no longer a thing in the third movie. And it's yeah. like, well, why didn't you just cure death again? It's like, because we did that in the last movie. Don't talk about exactly. it. <laughs> so, a uh, bit of of uh, d- deep dive in comic books uh, 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 I wasn't aware of. Yes, the, the character known as Hulkling is a, is a Kree scroll hybrid. I was oh, right about damn, that. Oh, damn, shit. How's he Hulk? However, uh... I I I had remembered hearing that he was uh uh gay but I don't remember hearing uh a a partner a, a relationship Ooh, who is he with just In the up. comics he was known for a re- relationship with Wiccan. Oh, that ties directly into and that ties into WandaVision and and skulls and and potential Cree hunters. Ooh. Well, Hulk, there was an actor that was cast as Hulkling, allegedly. Ooh, I uh, the rumors. I, yeah, no, I need to go find this because this was maybe two weeks ago or something, and this guy mentioned that he was excited to have wrapped up his cameo on WandaVision a couple of what, months months ago. And a real handsome guy, b- vaguely Asian, perhaps. Uh, no offense intended. Well, I think and, the current uh, Hulk is Asian. The I know Hulk. Isaiah, yeah, and, not he is. And, yeah, <laughs> and, and so uh, it makes you wonder. You know, are we going to get you know teenage by the end of Wandavision? Will we get teenage Billy and uh, Tommy? Uh, maybe exactly. exploring their sexuality at age seventeen, like we all did. What have you? What have you? Who can say? <laughs> yeah, that's that's because uh, if they are um, keep aging up and they're not stolen by somebody, which they're stolen as babies in the comics, right? By Mephisto, like reabsorbed. Uh, yeah, yeah, the reabsorbed. So if they're laying re-absorbed. them age into the characters for a Young Avengers, it would make sense to introduce Hulkling in the show. Briefly. Yeah, not give them a relationship, I, I mean, and then you make the next Avengers movie will definitely be New Avengers if that's what happens in this series. Like, why not? And then we have uh, Miss Marvel. We have they could in, work in my. Well, we know for all we know, Miles Morales <laughs> could be fucking in Spider Man yeah. Three, um, Iron Heart, like. And Hawkeye is sometimes involved. No, Kate Bishop. You yep, throw in there. Yep. I watched the girl. Fuck girl out of that Hawkeye. movie. Hmm. <laughs> that's 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 inter- interesting. And Nick in the latest uh uh promo for for WandaVision, 
There is most certainly ki- kids during Halloween. That's what I thought. I didn't and look it up again. But. that's where you start seeing the the neighborhood glitching. Who she's like and crying I think as she hangs might, up the clothes. She's, yeah. Uh, trying to uh, extend herself to so much. So damn, sons of bitches, look at the, that, ladies and gentlemen. A perfect reason to, to check in to LR Mornings every single day because we fucking ramble on long enough to discover shit like that. Hey, fucking I- a, bl- a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. There guys. you go. Or they yes. starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that that would be that would be a big deal because Feige did say they were would be introducing their their first bigger, like more than a cameo uh, LGBT character beyond saying retroactively because oh, you Eternals. cut out Tessa Thompson's. Thing, what? I thought that was confirmed to be in the Eternals, though. Is it? I thought they said the Eternals would be the. Is this he, is long before be the even fir- all the. Remember, because the Eternals were supposed to come out like a fucking right. year ago. But he. That's true. And they were. And I thought now, he said the first openly gay characters we'll yeah. see will be in the Eternals. Because even okay. Hercules, and if now they it use might him actually be gay. Hulkling. <laughs> God, that's the fucking trailer be. I'm looking for is the Eternals. Me too. Right. I would have rather gotten a new Black Widow trailer yesterday. All we got was Falcon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyways. Anyways. Uh. So yeah, guys. Up. Uh, please check out lrmonline.com every single uh, uh day day for all your entertainment news, needs, and opinions. Check out the uh, YouTube channel. All of our uh, podcasts are going up there, as well as all of the uh, celebrity interviews. Um. Be on the lookout for an interview this Thursday with the Jason Ellis shows Mike Tully, who also is awesome in his own shows, Tully Time and the the Tully Show. Um. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty cool interview. Check that out. Out. It will be on LR Mornings on Thursday. And uh, like I said, we're moving to this new format where we're trying to place these segments and and do some cool things. Hopefully, we're going to have Moments with Jammer every Wednesday. Hey, and is that uh, what Wednesday is? Moments with Jammer. <laughs> well, uh, a moment with Jammer is literally Jammer's going to yeah, send like us <laughs> a. No, he's going to get like 60, 90 seconds, his opinion on something, and I'll play it and we'll get to react to, to it. And I, I won't listen to it beforehand or anything, <laughs> but yeah. Um, like that. and then of course we're going to continue to keep talking, uh, tech, at least a, a part of every Tuesday. And, uh, yeah, let us know if you guys got any ideas weekly or monthly or bi-weekly, whatever segments and, uh, uh, f- find us on every available freaking uh, app for p- podcast there is. But like I said, SoundCloud is free for us, free for you to listen to to us and you can go back much further in the uh catalog so and all the nice playlists coots since i forgot you last uh when when i (laughs) made the uh football video but i corrected myself i'm still gonna (laughs) let you go first on uh um tooting your own uh social media horn thank you thank you thank yes coots tooting his own horn here coot toot if you will Find me on Twitter, you bastards, at Coots Brandon uh, for all your my garbage sports opinions and uh, nerd stuff. There you go. Nick. I am Geeky Nick Doll on the Twits. And uh, I am on Breaking Geek Radio, the podcast. Normally, I had a migraine last week or this week. Um, I'm on LRM mornings a lot. We'll see if that changes as we get more volunteers. But I was on it four times last week, and I'm quite proud of that. <laughs> Second only to Kyle last week. Um, I'm pretty sure you got fired earlier t- in this podcast. So <laughs> let's see what happens, buddy. <laughs> uh, Kyle's fired me a hundred fucking times. Jammer three times that. Um, and then I did... Um, and then we do uh, Marvel Multiverse Mondays, which just was kind of partially because I wanted to talk about the trailer. And we talked a lot about Marvel, which uh, we've done multiple times, but our most common guest so far is Coots. So that's out every Monday. There you guys go. You guys uh, know to find me at that Kyle Malone on Twitter, at that, um, at that one Kyle Malone, the number one. Uh, at the one Kyle Malone on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for listening. 
We will we'll talk to you tomorrow.